Hi everyone and welcome to another uh, session as we um, review and learn about ArcGIS Pro <coughs> as well as uh, some of the things that we're capable of doing with GIS. Um, today's kind of a fun day uh, for what we get to go over and what we get to learn. Um, if you can master what we cover today, and, and we're going to cover this uh, over the next two or three weeks, but if you can master it, you can really um, start to do data analysis and really produce some important information that can be used to make decisions uh, by organizations or individuals or government entities. Um, and so I hope that uh, you'll take special note of what we discuss and also really um, try to think through the process of, of what we're doing. Now let me explain the overall goal. Today um, we're going to build a model. Uh, and a model, what it is, is it's a series of tools that will be executed in a sequence in ArcGIS Pro. Um, these tools will do a specific task for us. And today what that task is, is to select locations to build new Little Caesars pizza joints. Okay, so if you think about Little Caesars pizza joints, where they're at, um, there's, yeah, there's, let's see, there's one in Ephraim. I know that. There's one in Payson uh, that I went to growing up. We're going to try and build in a criteria to help us know where to build a new pizza location. That criteria could include um, building it next to a major roadway. You know, not just any little city street, but some major roadway. Um, so we want to build our pizza place so close to some roadway. We want to build our pizza place uh, so that it's not too close to another pizza place. Um, we want to uh, build our pizza place such that it's in a place that has population. Okay, so it's not like beside a freeway in the middle of nowhere. Okay, <laughs> which would give it a good road but no population. So those are all factors that we want to build in. Uh, and again, as you think through this, try and think through. Okay, what what would be factors that would affect my decision and how could I analyze those in ArcGIS Pro um, and get an answer. So hopefully we can answer that today and hopefully you can continue to think about that as we go through this. Now um, we're going to be, like I said, uh, finding new places for Little Caesars pizza joints. Now just the first disclaimer, if, if you ever like build a pizza joint at one of these locations that we've found to be optimal, I hope you'll share in your, your wealth and, and well-being um, that comes from that with your GIS teacher. Uh, or at least, you know, share some pizza with me. Okay, so jumping into this, let's go ahead um, and let's just look at current Little Caesars locations. I, I built in a I've created a, a, got into Google Earth and grabbed latitude, longitude locations of several little pizza, little Caesars pizza locations. And so I've made, and let me just grab this little piece of data here. I made a list of latitude and longitude values. Okay, so you can see uh, longitude, latitude, kind of one row for headers and then just this list. You can do this in Excel, you can do this as a text file. Um, I've separated each value with a comma, okay? Um, so you can easily grab that information from Google Earth or from uh, another source to create that. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna jump into a new map. Okay, and let me show you some of the other data that I have besides just our Little Caesars locations. Um, I have, as I started this project, I created a few folders, like we always do. Uh, those folders include, as you look over here to the right, a PDF folder, okay, that can hold outputted, exported maps, a raster folder that could hold any sort of raster I might have or imagery, a shapefile folder, which is a good place to place things that maybe were sent to me that are, sh are shape files in, in nature. And then a workspace folder where I can like put stuff that I won't need later on, okay? So I've added that and the project in ArcGIS Pro by default built me a geodatabase as well as a toolbox. 
So those things came along for the ride. Um, let me show you some of the shapefile data that I have. I have census blocks. Let me just add Utah census blocks here to our map. You can see, so this is polygon and type, okay, uh, colored green. You can see there are really, really small census blocks and others that are a little bit larger. They're usually based on population, okay, so in the cities and, and more urban areas, the census blocks will be smaller and in more rural areas, definitely larger. Uh, I've also have on here Utah counties, okay, another polygon type data set, as well as roads of the state of Utah. And you can see there are a lot of roads in that data set. Let me bring counties up to the top so that everything else is hidden underneath it. We're going to work on um, we're going to work on pizza locations in Utah County. Now let's just see where we have Little Caesars locations currently. I showed you guys that I have that text file with XY data or latitude longitude data. Let me add just that list uh, into ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to come in to add XY event data. And it says, what's your table? Okay, you'll typically want to have either a CSV file for an XY table or uh, a text file. Okay, and again, you can make those in Word. You can make them in Notepad, uh, in any text editing um, type of, of software. If you do a CSV, you can make it in Excel and export it as a CSV. So those are all options. Now I'm just going to come and grab our Little Caesars coordinates okay, that I made. Uh, my X field longitude, my Y field latitude, that sounds correct. And then this is asking for the spatial reference, the current spatial reference of the data that I'm putting in. And it's correct and it's guessed that it's based on uh, latitude, longitude values um, with a WGS 1984 coordinate system. Okay, the name of it here, LC coordinates layer. Um, I think I'll rename that to establishments. Okay, Little Caesars establishments. And then I'm going to come down and just run that tool. And let's just see where we've got Little Caesars at. Okay, so it looks to me like, um, oh, let's see. I'm guessing this is our Ephraim location. Uh, looks like one out price. Uh, Nephi's location. This looks like Payson. Uh, I know that there are Little Caesars locations in Orem and Provo, so I think there's some air here, but that's okay. Maybe we'll we'll find some new places for some in Utah County if we don't count those. Okay, uh, here's a few in Salt Lake County, and then others farther up north. Okay, so here's some Little Caesars establishments for us to work from, and now I've created from this XY table a data set. Okay, that's called LC establishments. I think it's important to point out that it is being projected on the fly into UTM NAT 83 zone 12 uh, coordinate system. So um, that's great that it's capable of doing that. I still might reproject that data set later on. Okay, so as you look at this though, uh, so here's our current locations. We want to establish new locations, okay, and, and find places where the population is rich where we're close to a roadway and um, where we're not too close to a already previously established Little Caesars. So that's the goal. And we want to do this kind of in one swoop of, of the axe or one one uh, throw of the, one scoop of the shovel, one throw of the axe, whatever, however that saying goes. So what let's do, I'm going to pull out a geo processing here and I am going to go back to the catalog and let's just look at something else that is built in anytime you start a project. Now, so this is our project folder. I've named our project Restaurant Search ArcGIS Pro. Uh, I mentioned to you guys that these are folders that I added myself. And then that these two, our geodatabase and our toolbox, those come anytime you build a project. That it creates a, a specific geodatabase for that project and a specific toolbox. Now you can see here as I prepared for, for this video and this lecture, I built a little model. And so there's a model in my toolbox. 
typically this will be empty okay and there won't be anything underneath here if I right click on this toolbox I can, you see this new menu and as I come over I can create a new model which is exactly what we want to do today okay and there's other options here like a new script or tool set let's start a new model and we'll work from that now this one's called model one because I already uh, started another I'm going to just kind of minimize it here not minimize it but just make it a little bit smaller so that we can share the screen with our map I, I think that's kind of handy to be able to see multiple both things at once and, and talk about what's going on on the model that we see on the map alright so um, now here's the tricky part to any time we build a model again a model is going to be a sequence of tools that we create um, each of those tools being uh, in some way uh, working together to accomplish a task. Now let me show you, I'm going to bring this other model that I worked on onto the screen so you can kind of see what we're hoping to get at. Okay, so here's just another model that I'm pulling over uh, into the main viewing screen. And let me point out a couple things you see when you start a model. You'll see oval shapes and you'll see like rectangular shapes. These oval shapes represent a data set or a layer. Okay, in this case, you see counties as one, census blocks as one, roads as another. Um, and then these, and, and blue ones are data that I bring in, okay, that I, that I start out with to run this tool. Um, and then each time I run a new tool or operation like select or intersect or add field, those rectangular boxes as they execute themselves being a tool produce a result. It's almost like a... Uh, I don't know if this is a good example, but it's almost like a cheese grater where this is your block of cheese, the cheese grater is the tool, and the output is grated cheese. Okay, and so um, if you can think about it like that, some tools have one input, others have two inputs or even more. And so there can be multiple inputs to a given tool. Okay, and then again, each tool uh, has an output. Okay. Now, as you look at this, um, you can see that we take counties, and we're going to choose Utah County from that county list. And then using Utah County, we're going to intersect and cut out, kind of like a cookie cutter tool, cut out census blocks and roads that are only inside of Utah County, so that as we process the rest of these, um, we don't have to like redo everything, or like compute for the entire state of Utah we can just focus on roads and census blocks that are inside of Utah County let me point out a few other things you'll see as you look at this uh, anytime that you see this box colored yellow and the resulting output colored green means that that tool thinks it's just fine and that it'll work um, if I come over here you see some tools that are grayed out meaning they're incomplete or without enough information to operate as they should. You'll also notice that some of these boxes are shaded back behind where others, like this dissolve box, are not. Shaded boxes mean that the operation has been completed and that a data set, in this case, which is also shaded, uh, has a shadow behind it, exists. Okay, So that box was, was used, that tool was used, and the output exists and happened. Uh, this box, this dissolve tool, has not operated yet, and so there is no Utah County underscore DE. That doesn't exist yet. Um, it has the potential to, and it thinks it has all the right information, but it hasn't run that tool. Now, as we go along, I think you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to pull this back off to the side again, and let's build this together. Now, um, how do you get started? Well, so as you come into uh, starting a model, okay, and this model is on your screen, you'll notice in ArcGIS Pro, all of a sudden there's a new tab, okay, a new ribbon that's available for us to use that has specific tools for modeling. Um, you'll notice that you can uh, find new tools here. You can run the whatever you have in your model and say, hey, go through all these tools let's see what the output is you can save your model 
which will be important for us to do and not forget to do before we close out today. Um, and we'll look at some of these other options up here later on. Let's start by bringing our data out onto the screen or into our model. Now I've brought the data onto the map and I can easily from uh, my contents pane pull these over Oh, and let me get so I'm not renaming it and pull them into my model. So I'm going to pull counties and roads and now census blocks into the model. Now I mentioned to you that this uh, data set of Little Caesars locations, we just brought in the data and we, we saw together that the resulting coordinate system was going to be, uh, was created in what the data existed as, which was WGS, okay, or Latitude Longitude Information, a geographic coordinate system. We want to, pro <coughs> excuse me, to project that data uh, into a coordinate system that is common to the other uh, data sets that we have. I, I like to keep everything universal. So the first thing let's have our model do is take this data set and um, reproject it. Okay, so I'm going to come and I'm going to grab a tool. So I'm going to click on tools up here and you'll see over on my left uh, pane, the geoprocessing pane, I now can like search for tool. Now we mentioned before that you can jump into a toolbox and if you're good at like remembering the organization of all this, that's great. Okay. And, and usually we only work from like three or four of these at once. Um, so most of them are, you know, you wouldn't need to worry about. I like to search for them because you know as, as you get a little bit more experience you know what they're called you know what you need and you can just search and pull them onto the screen so that's what I'm gonna do first um, I'm gonna search for project one of our geoprocessing tools and I'm gonna get this project uh, tool bring it onto the screen I don't need the project raster and I'm going to reproject uh, our little Caesars locations now look at this I can grab this and um, kind of move it around inside of my toolbox. I can also come up if I grab the select tool oh, and and without selecting it okay now if I have the whole thing selected I can move it around if I just come and click and drag okay with the clicker held down this arrow appears and it's kinda like hey where do you want to plug this into a tool and I say plug it into this project tool and it says, what do you want to plug it in as? And I'm going to say, plug it in as the input data set or feature class. Okay, that's one way to do this. Um, the other thing I could do is just double click on project. And then I can choose uh, our Little Caesars establishments from this drop down. Okay. And actually, I'm going to choose this a little differently. I, I want it to grab it from our actual uh, model. And then it says, well, what do you want the output data set to be called? And so Little Caesars, uh, let's see, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this uh, Little Caesars Locations uh, Project. And I'm just going to try and give it a name that has meaning. Now it says Output Coordinate System. I could click here and select the coordinate system, or I could say, hey, let's use the coordinate system of some of the data that I'm working with and it'll pull out that coordinate system from what I chose. So I just chose roads and it pulled out and said, okay, well, that means you want NAT83 zone 12, which I do. Uh, the geographic transformation, um, I can select a good transformation and there's several to choose from. I like the one that came in as a default, so I'm gonna leave that as my selected transformation. Once I select okay, all of a sudden you notice project turned yellow and my output turned green, meaning it thinks it, it's capable of, of running okay, and capable of going. Now if I wanted to see it run, I could right click here on project and say run that step. And you can see it works on it. It says then done. It brings up this window with lots of information on it. Okay, start time and end time there at the bottom. And all of a sudden we're shaded back behind. So there exists now a data set in my default geo database for the project that is called LC locations project and it has the correct coordinate system. 
Okay. Now, I don't want to run each step one at a time, so I'm not planning to do that. Let's build in a number of tools all at once, and then we'll see if we can make them all run together. Okay, so I've got counties. Oh, let me just kind of move things around. And the first thing I want to do is I want to pull out Utah County. Okay, well, I only want to work with Utah County. So let's select that area. Oh, I didn't mean to. Let me see if I can bring this down to the lower half of the screen. Let's uh, do a select tool. So I'm going to come into geoprocessing, choose search for select. And what's select going to do? It's going to select one of our polygons that are part of the layer or a series of them depending on how we build it in. I'm going to double click on select and it says what input features would you like? Well I'm going to take as from our model variables counties. Okay, uh, It get, creates a name so output feature class I'm going to rename that and call it Utah County because in this case we are very specifically working with one. And then next it says what's the expression and, and I could do an SQL which if you want to uh, do things in SQL mode that's awesome and like it's it's good it's efficient it's quick uh, but add clause is probably just as quick and makes a lot of sense so I'm gonna add a clause and I'm gonna say I want so from the attribute table from the column of names I want it to be equal to and let me find the name of Utah County and I say add so there's like a criteria based for its selectional its basis of what it selects. And I say okay. And now it says okay I can do that. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to pull out roads in Utah County. So rather than as I come to my map and look at all of my roads which boy there's a lot of them. Uh, I want to pull out just roads of Utah County. So let's use a tool that will cut out the roads that are in Utah County. So it's just going to cut out all of these. Um, I'm going to come, oh I didn't mean to identify. I'm going to come over to my geoprocessing tools and I'm going to search for intersect. Okay, intersect is one of these cookie cutter tools and uh, it's really nice. It's going to see well what overlaps inside of what. That's kind of what how, how I think of it. So as I double click on it, it says input parameters. Well, Utah County and I see that from my model variable list is an option. It's not created, but it's in my model. So I'm going to say Utah County. And then it's going to say, um, well, what else do you want as an input? Or what do you want to cut out using Utah County as like a cookie cutter shape? And in this case, I'm going to say roads. And I'm going to rename this as Utah County roads. Now, as you go to rename each of these layers, uh, that are going to be created, please don't include spaces. Underscores are great, okay? Um, and letters are great. Capitals, lowercase, they're both fine. But don't include spaces, okay? That'll, I think that'll help. I'm going to say, okay, so now this will be, this result here will be Utah County Roads. It's going to cut out the roads, uh, all of the Utah County, it's going to use that to cut out the state of Utah roads. And I actually want to do the same thing with census blocks. Okay, and I'm only going to work with census blocks that are in Utah County. I don't want to work with census blocks of the whole uh, state. Okay, so I'm going to grab uh, census blocks, grab Utah County, um, and let me just call this Utah County. I'm just going to do CB for census blocks. Okay, as I rename it and say OK. And now you can see like it'll make these cool little curvy arrows that say, oh, these are two inputs to one tool and then there's one output. Okay. All right, next thing I want to do um, as we work with census blocks, if I come into the census block attribute table and we look at that attribute table, you'll see there is a ton of information here. Okay, now I pulled this this data off of uh, gis.utah.gov and you can see that they have a lot of information tied to each one of these blocks. And and they are like pretty important uh, pieces of data, okay? 
that help us base a lot of information about our state. But as you sort through this, there's some that I think will stand out to you. One, as I come across, let's see if I can find it. Okay, here at the end we've got square miles of each census block. We've also got area uh, in the units of the map. So square miles, and there's one other that I'm looking for. Here it is. Pop 100. So population in that census block. Um, you can see on this block it's 21. And several census block, nobody lives there. Okay, it's zero. Here's one. Uh, here's 15, 22. And here's 92. Okay, so we're probably in a small community there. So there's, yeah, there is a lot of information here. Okay, of where people are. Here's 40. And depending on the size of that that block, you could see like how how densely populated it is. Well, that's what we want to figure out is how densely populated it is. So 40 people live on this block. Well, how big of a block is that? If I come over to square miles, it tells me that 40 people live on 0 .046 square miles. I'm guessing that you know that's that's a fair number of people. Okay. Uh, look at this census block down here. This one's a, they have labeled it as an urban cluster. And how many people live on 0 .004 square miles? And come back over to Pop 100. Oh, it's actually got zero. Okay. Here's 20. Here's 18. Anyway, as you look at this, here's another one that might be kind of interesting, 50. As you look at this, these numbers don't give me too much info. Uh, they give me an area and they give me the population. What I want to do is I want to look at population density. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new field uh, in census blocks. So there's a tool for that add field. Okay, and let's look at these census blocks. Let's add more information. And our input table here will be Utah County census blocks. And the field name we want to add is going to be density. Now field type, I want to select that carefully. As you go to create a field in any attribute table, okay, and here we're doing it inside of a model, but anytime we create a new field, it asks us what type you'd like, and, and this is related to like information the computer can store. And so anytime it stores information, it likes to like uh, give that type of information a title or, or, or designate it as some type. Uh, long is something that's an integer, meaning it can't hold decimal values. A double can, and so we'll use a double um, because we might have density that you know is given in some amount of of a decimal that we'll want to include. Okay, um, I think this looks good. I'm going to say okay, and now that's ready to go. Now let's compute the density, and so I'm going to come in and find another tool that's called Calculate Field. Okay, I'm going to drag that down to um, my model. I'm going to click on Calculate Field, and I'm going to say uh, Input Table. Let's look at Utah County Census Blocks. Okay, and let me make sure that I've... Oh, and do you want... I'm going to do Utah County CB2, okay, because that's what we are editing here. Um, what do I want to add? I want to add, I mean, come to the very bottom, and there it is. I find density is what I want to add. Okay, that's the field I want to modify. And now this data set hasn't been created, but it knows that it's supposed to have density because that's what the tool does before. And so as we work with Calculate Field, we're able to find that field name. Now, uh, density equals, here we can just have it do some math on numbers from the, the table itself. So I'm going to say that density is equal to 
Let me see if I can find Pop 100. Here we go. Pop 100, I double click it. It appears here in my box. Uh, don't worry about the explanate, uh, exclamation points. Okay, um, I'm going to do divided by, and now I'm going to come down to the bottom and do square miles. So population per square mile. And I'm going to say OK. If I want, inside of that tool, I can come down and, and just click this verify. It says, yeah, that expression, it'll work. Okay, and so now I am computing how densely populated each square mile is based off the census block. Um, and I want to start to say I want to work with this this one and not with another. And so I'm going to select again some census block based off of how many people are there. So I'm going to come up and find select. Let's use that tool one more time. I double click on it and what I want to put in is this Utah County CB3. Okay. And we're going to say uh, census block. Um, I'm going to do Utah County CB 1500. Okay, and what I want to say here is I want to select a census block. Okay, and I'm going to come to my density field. I want it to pull out. Uh oh, where did density go? Okay, we came across a problem. If I wanted to pull out uh, any one of these that has a density equal to 1500. Now, it's not allowing me to do that. And part of the reason it's not allowing me to do that is because it doesn't know any density yet. So let's go ahead and try something. If I right click on this and say run, look at what it does. It's going to jump back and it's going to say, okay, we'll run anything associated with this field. And I need to be careful just because I'm seeing a warning here that I need to check on. I want to make sure that everything ran correctly. I do have the shaded areas, okay, and it's ran up to where I want to be. Now I'm going to double click on this. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to choose CB3, and this time as I add clause, I go all the way to the bottom. There's density. Okay, so now that I've computed it, and I want density to be is greater than. I'm going to say 1,500 people per square mile. And I'm going to add that as our selection method. And I could verify this. Okay, it's valid, but no records were returned. Well, it still needs to run through everything. Or I may have that empty table it was talking about in my warning. I'll need to review that. In the meantime, we'll move forward. Okay, now it's starting to get like kind of messy here, and I'm all spread out. I'm going to come up, uh, as I look at all these tools spread all across the model screen, I'm going to come up and click Auto Layout, and it quickly rearranges everything. I'm going to zoom out, and now I can kind of see things in a little bit better light. Okay, so um, we have selected all of these. Uh, I'm going to run another tool that maybe you haven't seen before. This tool is called Dissolve. What the Dissolve tool does is it for any two polygons that are adjacent to each other um, that it are representing the same thing, and in this case, census blocks that have a population density of 1,500 people per square mile, uh, it's going to merge those into one polygon. Okay, and So it's a really simple tool. All I need to input is, let's see, our Utah County census blocks select. And it continues to want to add to this name. Um, and I actually think I'll leave it. Okay, I'll leave it as is. 
Uh, and then as I come in here, I'm going to leave dissolve fields empty and just let it dissolve the entire shape. Okay, so now dissolve is done. So now what this output should be is it should be polygons of areas in Utah. Okay, not no longer census blocks, but areas in Utah County where the population density is greater than 1,500 people per square mile. Okay, so we've kind of got a, a data set or a layer now that helps us say, hey, this is where there's population. Okay, so that's one thing we want to look at. Next, we're going to look at, uh, hey, let's look at roads that are in Utah County and that are major roadways. Okay, so we've got Utah County roads here. Let's go ahead and select some uh, basis off of Utah County roads. So I'm going to get another select tool. And I'm going to drag that down onto my screen. I double click on select. Input features. I want Utah County roads. And I'm going to call this Utah County uh, Big Roads. Meaning I don't want roads that are um, are just little city streets. I don't, I'm not going to put a Little Caesars in a subdivision. But I do want to put it on a main street or on you know, uh, a highway or, or something like that. So I'm going to come in and say, here's how you can base your selection. As you look at the roads and look at... Um, all of the different information built into the roads. In fact, we ought to look at the attribute table for Utah roads. Let's go ahead and open that up. It comes right above us. There's like a lot of stuff that we could base these off of. Uh, um, we have like locations. Okay. It's interesting that Sam Pete's right at the top with roads in Manti and Ephraim. <laughs> Okay, as I come uh, looking through here, oh, this is kind of interesting. Here's a column that's speed limit. Okay, oh, this is interesting. Address quadrant. DOT name, so there's Highway 89. surface type. Okay, so they have the roads designated with a certain type of uh, finish on it. And there it is. Okay, so so let's see how we could designate a road that's not just a city street. One way I might do it is this speed column. Okay, I might choose roads that have a speed greater than 25 miles an hour because usually main roads are 35, 40, 45, and that's kind of where I, I think we want to be. So let's use that as our designation. We'll come, we'll choose the speed field. Okay, and we'll say a value that is greater than 25. So it's going to be 26 or above. I could have used greater than or equal to and put in 26. Okay, and I say add. So speed is greater than or equal to 26. Let's validate that. It says it's valid. And we click OK. So now we've chosen from all the roads in Utah County only the roads that are somewhat fast. Okay. Now let's make another designation about roads because uh, the place that we build probably won't be right on the road. It'll probably be like 100, 200, maybe even 1,000 feet off the road. Okay, so let's build in a buffer and say, let's look all the way around this road for some distance. So I'm going to grab the buffer tool, bring it down in, double click on it. Let's put in uh, Utah County Big Roads. Okay, and let's buffer about that a distance of, we're going to go 1,000 linear unit units, let's go feet. Okay, 1,000 feet off of the road um, itself. We want to buffer that. End type is round. That sounds just right for our buffer. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. Oh, you know what? 
Here's another thing that we could do real quick. We could dissolve all of our roads at the same time. So dissolve type, let's dissolve them all into a single feature. I think, I think that'll be good for us. Okay, um, now I've got all of the big Utah County roads, and this is going to be a polygon. Buffer is going to output polygons, and now I have polygons of dissolve. So I could lay those two over each other and see where there are areas that are with near major roads that also have lots of population density. Okay, and that's exactly what we want to do. So let's go ahead and use another intersect tool. And we will intersect these two values and find locations where we have um, big roads, near big roads. So use our buffer and uh, densely populated areas. And we're going to have the output be pop road. Okay, that's, so I'm going to name it Utah County Pop Road, and I click OK. Okay, and um, this is starting to look good. I think we're getting close. The last criteria that we had is we just didn't want it too close to an existing Little Caesars. Okay, so here's our current Little Caesars locations. They've been projected. Um, maybe let's buffer around those locations. So I'm going to come in, let's grab a buffer. We'll buffer around each one of those locations. Input is Little Caesars locations projected. And I'm just going to call this Little Caesar buffer. Okay, and let's say that our next Little Caesars location um, needs to be at least three miles from another linear unit and I'm gonna go miles on this uh, dissolve type yeah we can dissolve them okay now as you think about this what does this give us this gives us areas that are within three miles of a Little Caesars location which those are areas we want to exclude Okay, so what I might do is I might erase these areas from my population, populous areas near roads. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the erase tool. And let me just tell you guys, um, as you do this, if you need help with what the erase tool does, go ahead, click the little help icon here. There's like a little uh, imagery that appears that I think is really handy and it'll open up help online but I think this imagery is really handy so here's like an input feature here's an erase feature and there's the output so if we have input features which are densely populated areas near roads but we don't want it to be close to um, existing uh, Little Caesars okay then let's erase our input with these Little Caesars locations and we'll get places that are densely populated and not close to Little Caesars. So that's our hope. Um, feel free to use these little help icons and again as I hover over it I, I get that graphic which is enough for me to help me remember what needs to be input and where. Okay so I'm going to do input features. Oh you want? I don't want to do it here. Uh, I'm going to drag it into my model. <laughs> okay. So let's see, what was this one called again? This one is called Utah County Pop Road. So my input features is Utah County Pop Road and my erase features is Little Caesars Buffer. Okay, and um, my output here will be, I'm just gonna call it New Location Areas. And I'm going to say OK on this. Let me just rearrange this again. OK, this looks nice. Rearranged. 
Um, you can see I have ran some of these tools. Uh, and as you look at the ones I have run already, I can come to the catalog, jump into the geo database, and you can see here where those are. Okay, So you can see that they've been run here. Now, before we just stop this, let me save our model. Okay, so I'm going to click Save on it. It's saved as Model 1. If I want to rename it, I can do Save As and give it a different name here in our toolbox. I think Model 1 is just fine. Okay, so it's saved. Now, if I click Run right here, it'll run all of these tools. And it'll do one after the other. Um, and it'll take a while. I'll, I'll warn you, if you run it while you have Model Builder open, it takes a while. It is kind of fun because as you run it, for example, if I run this tool again, it turns red while it runs. Um, so you can kind of see where it's at in the process. But if you run it inside of Model Builder, it's it's going to go slow and kind of wear down on your com like your computer's memory a little bit. So know, know that that you know is is a possibility um, if I come over here and run it from the catalog I think you'll find that it runs a little bit quicker okay all right so I did a little investigating and it turns out that if you were to look at this tool that we did run well it is kind of empty so I brought it up onto the screen let me show you what its attribute table looks like it's kind of empty. Okay. Now what that indicates to me is a problem. Okay, and, and all of us are probably like, oh no. Uh we know how tricky it can be when you run into a problem in ArcGIS. But so something tells me when it runs this intersect tool, it doesn't really know like what it's grabbing information from. Okay. Now I could look at Utah County. So let me come back to my catalog. Here is my uh, default geo database and since I have run those tools step by step let me make sure Utah County is there and it is so that tool seemed to have worked correctly so this intersect tool for some reason is not getting census blocks now um, the other thing I want you to point out that may be part of our problem is there's a little P by census blocks I have if I right click on this I can make it a parameter and you see right now there's a green check mark that says this input is a parameter. What that means is as a parameter is if I come and click on the model it says tell me what is the census block. Okay, It doesn't do that with the others. I think that's kinda cool though. I can right click here and say make that a parameter. Right click here say make each of these parameters. I'm gonna click Save. So now when I come into, let me come back to the catalog, model one, it says, okay, give me the census blocks. And so I can choose from my map, uh, census blocks. Give me the Little Caesars establishments, I choose that. Give me the counties, I choose that. Give me the roads, I choose that. And then I can say run, and it'll go through this. It's running through the model. It's taking a little bit of time down there. But hopefully, in the end, it'll give us an output that we can look on our map and say, hey, those are locations where, those are areas where a new, uh, new location could be established. Now, while it does that, let me just point something out. We ran that model. from the geoprocessing or from you know our uh, from the catalog window and I mentioned to you that it's different when you run it here or even right click on one of these and say run anytime that I run it here or right click and say run it produces that output and you'll see that in the geo database if I run it from the catalog window you'll see that our geo database doesn't have any more in it than it did before. Okay, in fact it even has a little bit less. 
That's because it's not going to hang on to that intermediate step unless you tell it to, which is actually kind of nice. Okay. Um, now, we have new location areas. Let me bring that out onto the screen, and let's see what we get. If I say zoom to layer, looks to me like we had some sort of a problem. Okay, so so let's see if we can sort that out. Okay, well, welcome back everyone. I took just a quick break to figure out um, why uh, that tool left us with an empty output. And I read several things. Um, there's a few things you can do if you ever have that occur. You can check geometry. Okay, you can uh, try to repair geometry. Um, I, in the end, deleted the file and re-downloaded it because I'm worried that I lost information when I copied and pasted it to a new folder, which very well may have been the case. And now that select tool worked successfully for me. Uh, I tested the select tool with the roads to make sure that it worked, and you can see on the screen these are green roads. Those are Utah County roads, so that seemed to work just fine. And you can see now, as I look at uh, census blocks intersect, again, if I color those, different color here, maybe like a bright green, you can see that it successfully took, uh, intersected those. All right. With that being said, um, let's go ahead and finish this out. Okay, so I'm going to uh, modify this add field tool, have it take in our census blocks intersect. And let me just double check the name of this. And let's see if this will run now. I'm going to click Save over here, come back to the catalog, and let's try this one more time. Model 1 opens up. It asks us these different values. Now, I don't have my new census blocks as a parameter, and that's why you're not seeing it here as one of the parameters to choose. Um, and let's just try it without that, and let's just see what happens. Again, I apologize for the delay in the video. I guess you could fast forward for just a minute or a few seconds maybe, and we'll have this done. And again, um, as you face problems with ArcGIS Pro and in ArcGIS please uh, don't despair. Um, lots of times the solutions are are relatively simple. Lots of times they they uh, sometimes it's just by repetition that you can come to the answer. Other times it's it's by actually fall, finding a real problem or issue but but don't despair. Okay, it says it's doing a calculate field. So I guess that we're right here in this step. And then I'm doing a select, an intersect, a buffer, and now executing the erase tool. And we should see some output soon. Okay, and it says it completed successfully. Now, it didn't come up onto my map by default, so let me come back to my catalog and find it. So here's new location areas. Let's bring that out onto the map. Look at their coloring of this. I'm going to turn off census blocks. 
uh, turn off roads and make it a different color than our our defaulted map here we'll go this pink muted color And then let me zoom to layer. And there's a place to build a pizza joint right there. Let's see if there are any pizza joints. And I know there's one in Provo that's kind of down by where the old Dollar Theater used to be. I believe it's right along here, kind of on University Parkway. Um, so I think, I think we did OK, guys. Um, hey, look at this, Saratoga Springs. There's opportunity there for Little Caesars, American Fork, Lehigh. Um, I hope you can see what we just did. Again, any area you see here meets the following criteria. It's within 1,000 feet of a road with a speed greater than 26, greater than 25 miles an hour. It is uh, in a location with a population density greater than 1,500 people per square mile as of the 20. 2010 uh, US Census and finally third of all it is farther than three miles away from an existing Little Caesars pizza location and you can see Payson that's part of the reason Payson doesn't have any options here uh, just because even though the population density would meet the criteria it's far enough away okay oh wow even Goshen meets the criteria and Alberta. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay. Well, guys, um, I hope you can find this useful. Uh, again, I would probably change my parameters if I was serious about building a pizza joint because I don't think any pizza place should be in Alberta. I think that just would not last. Um, so I'll probably tweak my parameters before I build my Little Caesars. But I hope you can see what we accomplished today. Um, thanks for watching and uh, uh, thanks for working so hard.